In this training video, we'll review how to save and organize measurements on the 2250 and 2270 sound level meters. First, let's take a look at where measurements are stored and how files are organized on the meter. At the top of the screen, we can see the name of our current measurement, which we haven't made yet and haven't saved as indicated by the asterisks here. We can see the measurement will be saved in the root folder of the SD card. If I click on the file path, I can bring up the Explorer window, and this will show us how all the measurements are organized on the meter. If I click on the folder up icon, I can go up to the main folder where we can see the available drives on the meter, the internal disk, and the SD card that is currently in the meter. It's a good idea to always save measurements to an SD card. It allows for easy backup, it is easy to remove from the meter for storage, and allows us to keep the internal disk from being filled. If we're using a new SD card, it's a good idea to format the card before using it. If we open up the folder, we can elect to save measurements directly to the root folder of the SD card, or we can organize our measurements with subfolders. We can create a new job folder by clicking on the Create Folder icon. The default name is Job01, but we can rename it to whatever we like by clicking on it and selecting Rename. In this example, I'll use the name Test1. If we open up our new folder, we can click on the icon to set that folder as the default job folder. Any new measurements will now be stored in our Test1 folder. If I close the Explorer window, we can see that our Project 001 measurement that we are about to take will be saved in the Test1 folder. We can also get to the Explorer window by going to the main menu at the lower left and selecting Explorer. Let's make a couple sample measurements to show how the files are organized on the meter. I'll start and stop a quick measurement and then press the Save button to save the measurement. Notice that when I save the measurement, the asterisk icon next to the measurement name goes away to indicate that the measurement has been saved. If we'd like to change the name of our measurements, we can go to the Preferences menu and look at the Storage Settings. If we select No for Auto Name Project, we can use whatever name we like as the default measurement name. For example, if we are measuring engines, we might use the name Engine. Now, when I reset the measurement to initiate a new one, notice that the measurement name is Engine 001. When we make a measurement and save it, it will maintain that name. Notice again that when I save the measurement, the asterisk next to the name goes away. Another option we have for naming projects under the Preferences menu is to auto name them, which will use the date on the meter for the measurement name. Now, when we reset the current measurement to initiate a new one, the new measurement will be named after today's date automatically. The date format is the year, the month, and the day. The new measurement name will also have a numerical suffix at the end, 001 in this example since it's the first measurement made with today's date as the name. I'll save the measurement. And now we can go to the Explorer to see that the new measurement has been saved in the Test1 folder we created.
If we're going to make another series of measurements, we might want to create a new folder to store the measurements in. I'll call this new folder test2. I'll also select it to be the new default job folder. Now any new measurements we make will be stored in the test2 folder. We can see in the file path that our new measurement will be stored in our new folder, and I'll make a quick measurement. When we download our data to measurement partner suite, BZ5503, the folder structure we created on the meter will be maintained so we can easily manage our data when we download it. If we'd like to look at any of the saved measurements that are on the meter, we first have to go to the File Explorer. Then we can go to the folder that contains the measurement we'd like to look at. If we'd like to look at the measurement we saved for our first test, we can go to the Test1 folder, and select what measurement we'd like to look at, and click Open. So now we've just opened the measurement called Engine 001, and we can look at any of the results from that measurement. Any of the parameters that are selected to be measured during the measurement are saved with the measurement whether they are displayed or not. When we download the data to BZ5503, all the parameters will be available there as well. Let's take a look at that next. I have my meter connected to Measurement Partner Suite BZ5503, and as I mentioned before, the folder structure we created on the meter is followed when we look at the data and download it in Measurement Partner Suite. If I expand the folder structure, we can see the two folders that we created on the meter, test1 and test2. To look at the measurements, we'll first have to download them to an archive. We can do that either by clicking on an individual measurement to download to an archive, the whole folder, or the entire SD card to download all the data to an archive. I can select what archive I'd like to send the data to, or I can create a new one, which I'll do, and I'll call this new archive today's test. We can choose whether to transfer just the selected data or transfer any data that has been modified after a certain date and time. Now that we have the data downloaded to our new archive, notice that the folder structure from the meter is maintained in Measurement Partner Suite. This can be very helpful for organizing our data both on our meters and in Measurement Partner Suite on the computer. We can see the results from a measurement by selecting it. If we select the whole folder, we can see a list of the results from that folder and an overview of the information from those measurements. That's a quick introduction on how to save and organize measurements on the 2250 and 2270 sound level meters.